your walking cane. I'm gonna be using a Cane Masters self-defense. This is the Traveler. It's the first link below if you wanna see what they cost, what they're made out of. This one is an oak. I like oak and I like hickory. They're both two extremely strong. Which one's stronger, hickory stronger? But it's your choice. I like the feel of oak. I also like the feel of hickory. I have both, you can get whatever you want. First thing that you have to do when you talk about self-defense, cane self-defense, unarmed self-defense, self-defense against a bigger attacker, self-defense against multiple attackers, self-defense against somebody with a knife or a hatchet or a machete, it's all the same. You have to shift your focus away from techniques that you're gonna use to the principles that underlie the techniques. The first principle or the first standard is I want you to pay attention to your surroundings. We also call that situational awareness. Situational awareness allows you to see the threat before it gets to you in most cases. Not always, sometimes they're lurking in the shadows, you're distracted, they jump on top of you. It's over before you know it. You have to immediately start to fight in order to defend yourself. But when you have the opportunity to, to employ situational awareness, that's always gonna be the first standard or the first principle of self-defense. So number one, situational awareness. Number two, I want you to think about getting into a better position. Now, carrying a walking cane for self-defense gives you a lot of options. You can carry it with the crook or the hook facing behind you, kind of in a traditional way. Leaning on it as you walk, you might need it for mobility. You would walk with it this way in a natural position. This way allows you to lift and allow it to slide. And I'm gonna slide there onto my grip. That's just that uh, 540 cord or paracord grip on there so that when I get sweaty, as you can see, I get sweaty a lot down here. This isn't gonna come out of my hand. When you bring it up into this position, you simply put it between you and the threat. You wanna create distance as much as possible between yourself and the threat when you can. So situation awareness is number one, the first principle. The second principle is always going to be getting a better position when you can. We're talking about how to stop a violent assault with your walking cane. Position, the third thing is you are going to ask yourself the question, what can I remove or destroy? His ability to see me, to breathe temporarily or permanently, his ability to be awake, his, I can smash here, knock him out. I was talking to a student about that last night, law enforcement. He said it's something that's very often used by law enforcement and especially corrections officers when they come in and they strike this area of the neck with the forearm. In this case, you would use your walking cane for self-defense. So the idea of asking yourself where or what target can I remove or destroy for self-defense allows you to react to what's happening and respond to what's happening and not be stuck in a set number of techniques that you may have practiced on the bag or in the air. So always ask yourself, number three, what can I remove or destroy? Then let's talk about techniques. So as I said before, you can be carrying it in this position. One way to get into a better position is to step up and allow it to slide there through your hand. Sometimes, or sometimes you might not have the ability to get in this position. You might have to respond more quickly. You can snap them up into the groin, lifting them off the floor a little bit and start your self-defense attack that way. I like the idea of blasting him and not block blocking him. He's got a a knife, a machete, a hatchet, a hammer. In New York City, the last couple days, we saw both situations, both scenarios. One guy was attacking people, innocent people, obviously, criminally insane guy, chopping somebody with a hatchet. The next day was a story of a man walking around hitting people with a hammer. Of course, they always prey on the unsuspecting. That's why situation awareness is always number one. Pay attention to your surroundings. If you have to respond quickly, the guy pulls out the weapon, snap him up right between his legs, and then put your hand here. Now you have leverage because your hand is here, your other hand is here on the shaft of your cane. And just like you would if you were in the military, you would do a bayonet attack, just striking straight through the person's midsection. And hello to everybody who's on there. I might seem a little tense. I have to be honest. I just saw the reports coming out of Afghanistan. And as a former Marine myself, seeing that some young Marines had to die in this ridiculous situation, which could have been avoided in my opinion, and in the opinion of many people, I'm a little frustrated, I'm a little grumpy. So I said a prayer for those uh, young men and their families, because I know, you know how horrible that must be getting that kind of news. 
And again, such a senseless tragedy. So if I'm a little off, I, I'm, I'm not asking for your forgiveness. I'm not asking for your grace. I'm just saying I'm a little grumpy when it comes to that. The, the, the world seems a little crazy right now. So you have to do something. I went over, I did a bunch of uh, exercises, did a bunch of push-ups, did some squats, got my mind ready. Because if you take action, you don't get stuck just thinking about stuff. Take action, don't think about things too long. Start moving, control what you can control, be nice to people, be kind to people, be loving, and then the world has to take care of itself. All right, back to our self-defense with the cane. You're walking cane self-defense. How to stop a violent assault. So let's say this threat has a weapon, has a knife. I don't want to try to block the weapon. He's swinging that hatchet down into my head. I don't want to block it there. What happens if when you put your hand up, you collapse and it chops you? Or you put your cane up and it breaks the cane and it ch chops you. Or you stop him like this, maybe you hit his hand or you hit that hatchet, the hatchet's not made well or it's been uh, busted a little bit and the head of the hatchet comes flying off and hits you. Or you hit his hand and the knife comes out sticking in your chest. If you can, stick that through his face and knock him unconscious. Render the knife useless because his body is not being connected or controlled to his brain. He's knocked out. If you can knock him out, knock him out. So when you have to snatch him up between the legs, strike here in the midsection. If he's swinging something and he runs into that, you're going to be in a better position than trying to block and parry and twist and move and trying to catch and remove. Don't get into it. Don't get all kung fu movie where you're trying to take away a knife or a hatchet, or a machete, or a skateboard from some thug, thug, or punk, or criminally insane person. Instead, stick that into his throat, or up into his jaw. Maybe you hit that with so much force, boom, lights out. You don't have to worry about trying to take it away. So I say blast them instead of block them. Don't block anymore. <laughs> and, and, and it's fun. I like to teach all the different ways to move your cane and do fancy stuff and the spinning. That's all good stuff. I also like to teach the twisting and the turning. I have a very deep background and a lot of different martial arts weapons that I can apply to the cane. However, when it comes to self-defense, I'm going back to boot camp, 1989, in the Marine Corps, Semper Fi, in a moment of uh, prayer for, for the, the four guys, at least four so far, who've lost their lives over in Afghanistan who didn't have to, whether they had to or not, just, you know, it's always a tragedy. Anyway. Thinking back to Paris Island, right? And they give you a stick of rifle in your hand and they put a bayonet on the end and they give you a bunch of tires and some dummies. And they say, all right, I want you to run as hard as you can. And jab, 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 jab. That's what I want you to do with your walking cane for self-defense. I want you to simplify it. Take it down to the most simple techniques you possibly can and focus instead on the principles. Principle one. Pay attention, situation where principle number two, get into a better position. If you can get here, let it slide down a little bit, put it between you and the threat, he's gotta get around there. I can thrust, I can slash, straight down on top. I just lost the tip. Uh, pro tip, pro tip for the tip. If you want to, you can just um, tape it on with some black electrical tape. That's what I normally do. On my other ones, this is my nice everyday in the car cane, thought I'd show you. Look at those eyeballs, look at that tooth, rake that across his face. Or you can just put a, a little uh, screw, use a, don't drill it, just a little wood screw, put it in there, a little bit of wood glue. And I found that also works to keep it off when you're training. Now, you have thrusting, you have slashing, grab this, use this big bar of wood, of oak or hickory, maybe yours is plastic or metal, and stick it through his face or his throat or his chest. Wherever you've determined that you're going to strike because you answered the question, what target can you remove or destroy? Eyesight, his ability to hear, maybe you box his ears, um, his ability to breathe temporarily through the nose and the mouth. And by the way, if you smash really hard, I had this conversation with a student this week, um, he, he, a little bit older than me, and he said, by the way, did you know if you strike here and go into the brain, he's dead? I said, no, that's a myth, that's not true. We used to all think, I always thought that until like 10 years ago, 15 years ago. It's not true, you can't do that and it doesn't go in the brain. But if you palm strike really hard or you take this and you slam that teardrop shape wood straight into his nose, into his mouth, 
That's going to cause so much pain, watering, blood. He's going to be choking. His teeth are loose. Some of them went down his throat for self-defense. That you're going to be effective in your ability to defend yourself against a violent assault. Now, remember where we started. If he's got a knife, he's got a weapon, whether it's a bladed weapon and it's short like a knife, he's going to stick it in you, or he's swinging a machete or a Gerber hatchet, or he's got a skateboard, maybe a blunt weapon, right? Or baseball bat, tire iron, uh, you name it. He's swinging a lot of the Antifa thugs carry those. And yes, I do mean Antifa thugs. Sometimes they get some feet pushed back, caught me on the wrong day, where people say, you know, well, you can't call them Antifa thugs. That's not really fair. What about the? And I'm like, look, I'm not, I'm not judging them based on their politics, although that's bad enough. I don't think they really have any. I think they're just a bunch of spoiled brats who want to destroy stuff. I'm judging them on the behavior, the behavior that they exhibit, the soy boys, as they like to call them. The, you know, they're out there. They're not, they're, not, they're not strong. They're not confident. They're not brave. They go in packs. They prey on the weak. They hide behind masks. They throw things at law enforcement when they know they can't defend themselves. So don't, don't please don't push. If you have a comment about, you know, I'm all wrong about the uh, Antifa, they're really good people. Keep it to yourself or put it down there. I don't care. But uh, just understand, you're not going to change my mind. We're never going to change each other's minds, right? Let's just be nice to each other. Keep it polite. All right. Back to self-defense, using your walking cane. You want to know how to stop a violent assault? before he closes the distance and slashes you, stabs you, smashes you, you're going to thrust, strike. You can come down with one hand or two hands with this hard strike across the jaw, on the temple, into the ribs, maybe going for his elbow or his shoulder or wrist, breaking a joint, or with a single hand, like your Errol Flynn, or you're some type of sword fighting uh, Zorro or something. Just hard, fast, devastating strikes. And double them up, triple them up, quadruple. Do one, two, three. Do one side, the other side, back and forth. One, two, three, four. The jab is, or the thrust is always going to be my favorite because it goes through the center line. If I hit him in the spine or anywhere in here, it's going to push him back, right? He's got a weapon. I don't want him close enough to stab me, to strike me. However, I also don't want to back up myself because that gives him distance to swing through. It gives him the ultimate distance. Now, it's instinctive. You're going to want to recoil and back up and cover up, but you've got to fight. You've got to train that out of you. Train your instinct away, and instead of backing, whoo, go forward, thrusting first in here. Remember, look at all that leverage I've got from this position. That's just from this position up into the groin thrusting here. I can put two hands, continue to press the attack, close with, and destroy the enemy. That's what we should be doing. Close with and destroy the enemy, right? Violence of action, using those basic self-defense techniques, self-defense principles, not techniques, principles of situation awareness, better position. What targets can you remove or destroy? Those first three get you half the way home, but then it's like a baseball player, you start hitting home runs when you go to number four, which is that immediate direct explosive. Close with and destroy. Immediate means right now, right? Direct, shortest distance between two points is a straight line. That's straight in and explosive. Just that violence of action, just thrusting over one, two, three, and then into the face, and then maybe boxing right to the head, right? And then think about how you generate more power in your training. Learn how to turn with your body when you thrust and not just your arms, right? This is just the arms. This is the body. That means the core muscles in the front and the back of my body are engaged and they're much bigger than my, my arms and, and the shoulders especially. When I do this, Charlie Chaplin, right? That's just the arms. That's not enough power not to stop the violent assault, turning the whole body, and then adding a little step with that front foot as you come in. And look at this here. I can keep it low. I can angle it up. By ang to angle it up, all I do is turn my shoulders a little bit. I can go up, up into the throat. 
As long as you keep it close to your body and you let your body do the work, you're going to be so strong. I don't care how much stronger you used to be than you are now. Senior self-defense, maybe that's what you're doing this for. Uh, disabled person self-defense, wounded warriors. It doesn't matter. When you use your whole body, you have a lot more strength than you do with just your hands. So you want to generate stronger, harder strikes, faster strikes. Learn how to, and practice this, learn how to turn into your strikes, right? Extend your strikes, uh, the elbows out, turn and extend, and then finally moving in. Those are all basic principles of self-defense. But number one is always situation awareness. Number two, you have to get to a better position. Now, from here, this is one position. You can also turn the crook. And again, look at that. Think about what this bevel on, on this oak, right? My other cane is hickory, which is even stronger than oak. You can get the, for six bucks more, you get hickory, right? But it's a personal choice. I just said something about oak. I grew up with oak. I love oak. But I have some new hickory stuff too. And I, I got to tell you, I love that just as much. It's heavier. Hickory is much heavier. You can also, if you're older, this is something that we've done on the Cane Masters website, which is the first link below. I just forgot, I just, I forgot that we did this. Because um, people keep asking me, where can I get the, I used to teach with a, uh, a lightweight rattan cane. And the, the comment is, I'm an older person. I, the, the, the regular cane's too heavy. Do you have any more of those rattan canes? The answer is no, I can't find them. I can't find them anywhere. No one seems to have them in stock. It's because COVID wiped out 40 to 50% of all martial arts schools and the supply companies are suffering as much as we are because they're not getting business from us because half of us are gone. The rest of us are just treading water, right? Just keeping your nose and your lips above water. Every once in a while, get a little bit of oxygen and then keep paddling. Hoping and praying something's gonna change. It's like if you get stranded somewhere and you realize that you're, you're being stranded. That's the reality. You can sit there and you can complain and you can whine and you can moan and you can say, they should, they should, they, it's their fault. Or you can say, look, no one's coming to save me. I better start looking out. How do I save myself? Figuring it out, right? How do I get myself out of this situation? Because honestly, we got ourselves into it. And I'm not judging the people who are stranded because they should be, they're an American citizen or they were given a promise. They should have been come, They should have been out months and months ago. Anyway, back, out, back and up. And that's not politics. That's just a former military person angry about seeing what's going on. Anyway, sorry trying to keep that out of this. But the point is this, I was thinking about this. You can sit there and you can complain, you can say, that guy, that guy, that guy, so unfair, so unfair. Or, like the guy's trying to smash your head in with a hatchet, right? You can be looking at that guy, that's so unfair. It's not fair of you to smash me with your hatchet. <laughs> no, it's not, but that's not the point. You can get into a better position, stick that through his face, smash him across his skull, maybe it cracks open a little bit for self-defense, as he's going unconscious and his hatchet goes flying out the window. And you took some action to protect yourself because you realize maybe somebody else isn't gonna do it right now. Maybe we've entered a time of craziness where some things you need to do for yourself and sometimes you need to have a posture where you start to invest in putting a little bit of water aside and some toilet paper. Toilet paper's going away again a little bit of toilet paper, and then you try to train your body, get your body strong, no matter where you are, no matter how old you are. I got some videos today from Bill. Bill, they're awesome. Bill's showing me, he's doing his, he's doing his, uh, his squats, he's doing his Indian clubs, he's training with his weapons. Doesn't matter how old you are, you can always start, start where you are and move a little forward, but take action. Stop saying it's so unfair. There's no such thing, right? No, no such thing as fairness, unfairness. There's only preparation. Prepare or panic. What are you doing to prepare? From this position, you can pop, oh, I'm gonna smack myself. Pop it up. That would have been good. Calm me down a little bit. Pop it up into your hand. From here, pop it up. Just pop it up. You can now thrust. You can rake. You take this, yeah. Oh, Cool Hand Luke. Random American said watching Cool Hand Luke yesterday. Yeah, you know, the boss's cane has a tooth. You're right, I forgot that. I love that movie, Cool Hand Luke. The egg scene, right? With his George, not George, was it George Papard? No, who's the, the, yeah, the big guy. I always think it's Brian Dennehy, but he's of a different generation. Great movie, Cool Hand Luke. If you haven't seen it, where have you been, right? Most of us have seen it. We, I grew up, anytime 
I, I went through a phase in my life. Anytime I felt like I needed to fight for survival, I'd watch Cool Hand Luke. All right, you got this one here, thrust here, thrust here, rake. Take that tooth and rake across the face, right? That's what that's for. Use that for self-defense. Yeah, Random American said he's seen it many times. I used, to, I used to know every line. You know, you sit there, you quote it. All right, also, if it's in this position where the cr uh, crook is facing out. Yeah, I'm from Ohio. Paul Newman's an Ohio boy. He went to uh, uh, Kenyon College. And then the, the other guy, the, uh, they both race cars, right? Who's the other pretty boy? They were in uh, Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid. Paul Newman and who's the other guy? Super liberal uh, director. I think he's still alive. Did that chocolate movie recently, Mexican chocolate. I don't know. Paul, who's the other guy? Paul Newman and um, yeah, Robert Redford. They both went to uh, universities in Ohio. Oberlin College, that's where he went. All right, you're coming here right up into the groin, thrust here, rake here. If you have to, stick it in there, rip off some skin. But however you use it, be simple. Be simple, be immediate, direct, and explosive. And again, thrust over and over. One, two, three. Be pushing here. Leverage what you have naturally. Don't get so complicated and fancy. You can. I'll teach you all the fancy stuff, but we'll do it more for the esoteric value. We'll do it for the educational value. After you learn how to simply get them off of you and strike in a way that you can go home safely in case the guy has a knife or something else. How to stop a violent assault using your walking cane should be simple. And then learning the martial arts side of it. That's the fun part, right? Where you do all the different spins, popped out of the hand again, start doing the spins, you're going around, you're doing the stuff, the combat cane spinning. That's all fun, that's all good, that's all cool, that's all great stuff. But first and foremost, always, always, always know how to defend yourself and it starts with principles. One more time, T, it's good to see you. T lives just down the street. Uh, T, I'd love to see you in person again. Stop by when you get a chance. Number one, Situational awareness, pay attention to what's happening around you. Number two, you have to get into a better position. If it's here, get in the front hand between you and them. If it's in this way, pop it up. And by the way, you can snatch them up real quick that way. From here, if you have to, you can cover up with it. If you're a little slow and they hit you and let them hit that first. Like I said, I prefer you don't block, I prefer you blast them first. Situational awareness, get in a better position. And then ask yourself that question with the breath. The breath is so important. It centers your body, gives you a little bit of the oxygen you need to relax and calm down. Remember, you don't have any time to slow down. Don't slow down in self-defense. <sighs> calm down. Learn how to calm down. Don't slow down. Immediate direct explosive. Close with and destroy, right? They've got a weapon you want to get in as close as you can while they're swinging. It's different if they have a knife. If they're like this, you don't want to close with and destroy. You want that distance, right? And you want them to run into the, the cane. And you want to be striking and keeping it always in front of your body. Never swinging like this. This is always wrong. This from your shoulder is always going to be right when it comes to those slashing strikes. Practice the basics over and over and over again until you're a master of the basics and then learn the, the fancy complicated stuff. I will teach you that, I promise. But the reason I do so many of these on these basic techniques, I feel compelled that um, you have to know how to defend yourself first. When I, teach you, when I teach martial arts every single class now, no matter how traditional the program is I'm teaching, it starts with situational awareness. Get into a better position. And then immediate direct explosive. Close with and destroy. Violence of action. And then we'll go through kata or pumse or patterns or whatever. Or we'll go through one-step self-defense. Or we'll go through all the different fancy kicks and kicking above the head and spins. We do all that. But that, to me, is not martial arts. Or that's not self-defense. That's martial arts, right? They're two separate things. Learn self-defense, then learn martial arts. You guys have been awesome.